Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so, I did put a video on the channel about this. This is basically a $25 to $35 DIY variable power supply amps and volts. Um, while well mine right now does not have an amp meter, but does have a volt meter, I'm going to go over what I used. And if you want to buy this, it's on Banggood. You type it. I might try to put a link in the description, so I'll try that first. But if that doesn't work, it's basically you just type in power supply module, and then you get this board. And what's in here is this red board here. It's got a voltage adjustment, amps adjustment, and what you use is a 20 to 24 volt AC uh, transformer. And then it goes into the board and converts it to DC, variable, amps, and voltage. Mine is a continuous 2 amp peak 3.5 amp transformer. So I can get about 2 amps out of this steadily. Um, if you have like around the same thing, this is an Archer. I don't know how old it is, but it works. Salvage it from some electronics. Um, that's why the cost is so low. Basically, you get yourself $5 digital volt reader which I already have um the the reason I said 2025 is because you buy this like 10 to 15 dollars is the most expensive part is this and the board which is about five to six dollars but it does take about a month to get to your house or wherever you're doing this but other than that it doesn't take that long we have posts you can use the clamp posts like I have or the ones that you tighten down by hand um, dials, they did not come with these knobs. I had these knobs from my own little, um, parts collection, I'll call it. Um, but other than that, it's not much to it. It has 24, 4 volt power output, 4 fans, and it literally says on the board, t fan 24 volt. So I have two on here. When I turn on, it does get quite loud. I mean, it's not terrible but when you have a good amount of amperage um going into it the fans do die down so there's that um there's a little bit of hot glue i'm not done with this yet but it is still a very cheap way to get a variable power supply which everyone should have i'm gonna crank it all the way up here so i can get 22 0.65, 22.5 volts DC out of it. Um, it does have, it doesn't really have any over discharge, charge protection, um, over current. Basically, what it does it shorts out? It just tries to relay that power back in. So it's not like it has its safety things. What I am going to do, though, is I haven't done it yet because I didn't know about all the features, is um, put in a fuse in here. It has its fuse from the p transformer power supply. So there's that. Um, it's a 10 amp, 250 volt AC fuse. So basically, ever if I draw too much from this, this fuse will go in here instead of this, which is nice. I'm going to turn it off so I can show you the rest of the stuff. So we got two fans, I said earlier. Um, power, the, the transformer. There's the fuse I was talking about. It's one of those screw in ones, so you can um, screw it and unscrew it when needed. I'm just going to pull these out so they don't fall. Oop, but they're going to fall anyway. I haven't soldered on the fans yet, but I will. Right now they're just wire nuts, so that's a plus. Tip this up. Please don't. There we go. I guess that wire not like a stamp. Okay. So what we have here is the transformer. Sorry, let me adjust the mini tripod for you guys. There we go. So what we have is the mini transformer. The switch. The fuse holder. Then the board itself. The two potentiometers let me try to get some better light in there I think that made it worse 
there we go. Better lay down the board. Two pots, which are hard to see, but they're in there. Then the board. The only thing that the board did not come with was this heatsink. There is a voltage regulator right here. It has a screw that it has a hole that you can put the screw through. This gets very warm if you have continuous two amps. So I put this on here, and with the double fans I have set up on mine, I can get a nice cooling flow onto this regulator. Because I do not want this to explode because I don't know what it is. It doesn't have numbers. Well, it does, but, like, I don't know brand or anything, so leave that on there. It's good to go. I mean, it's not a really big deal. If this blows, you just buy another board for five, six bucks, you're good to go. What else? Um, that's basically it. That's all there is to it. I do not have my amp meter set up yet, so there's not extra wires for an amp meter. But I do, as you can see, threads here. This is for my light to make sure I know it's on. Because if I go in lower voltages, other than if I did not have the fans plugged in, I would not know if it was on or not. Because, see right here, this is only designed to go to minimum about 3 volts. So I'll show you here. See? If it's not lower than 3 volts, you don't even know it's on. So that's why I have this red light here. It's a little AC-DC mini light bulb. I have quite a few of them. And I recommend you put them in here when you have this. They're just these little easy to light things. Um, so what I would also get, though, which I might get in the future, is two things. Um, an analog amp. I mean, I'm sorry. Analog voltmeter. And I'm getting a, a shunt for the amps, so that's nice. And a different case. This case is from an old, uh, I'm not sure what to call it, like, it, it's an old TV splitter. Um, here's a plug from it. It, what it did was it split two TVs. Anyway, that's not the point, it split in two screens. Anyway, I had to do a little bit of modifications, like drill a hole bigger for this to come out, and... That's why the side posts are all the way over there, because I didn't feel like cutting through steel. I didn't want to put it in some janky plastic container. So what I'm going to do is, is that it does raise the cost of this to about $35. My current setup would be $35 then, because I put my own money into this for some other special items. that Just creature comforts for me. Um, it raises up to $30, $35, because there's a plastic case on Banggood for $10, and it literally is designed for this. You put this board in there, you put your transformer in there, it's got a little kickstand, and it's got a panel. You can cut out this stuff, put the knobs in, wherever you would like to put it. I also try to link that in the bio. Um, but for right now, the setup's pretty good. I also have extra space if I ever put, want to put any other accessories, like, let's see here. I get a bigger transformer in the future. I, you know, want to put in some secondary stuff. I have a shunt that I might need to put in for the amp meter. I might change fans. I just don't know. So I'm going to leave it like this as my de complete DIY kind of little power supply. And we're going to see how far it can last, how, how durable it is. But I'm just going to warn you right now. This board is rated for 3 amps continuous. Do not, and I repeat, do not go over that. Because what you'll do is you'll blow, there's a white resistor in here. You blow that resistor and the voltage um, adjustment. And I really think that's a pain in the ass. But I'm going to deal with it because I don't have money to spend on a nice, super nice adjustable lab bench power supply that I do need. I have been needing one of these for about three years. And, well... I could have not bought certain things RC-wise. I'd rather have the RC stuff than a power supply, which I totally thought I could make myself. But looking at those ones online or on YouTube where they want you to make your own circuit or it's just the ones from the computer power supplies that you unplug it and it's, this is 3 volts, this is 5 volts, this is 12. I don't want that. I want to be able to adjust my own amps. I want to be able to adjust my own voltage. And I want it to be rugged enough, obviously. But I don't want it to be super small. I do want a bigger one because then if I want to adjust it later. Or I don't want some copycat thing. So that's just my personal thing. And, but works very well. I can bring that voltage all the way up. Let's see, let's test some stuff. How about that? 
It's probably when it's working. So, but what I did do is I put these alligator clips on. Plug in alligator clamp. So it's at nine volts. And you can hear the fans going down the higher amps I go, or higher voltage. That's one test. The fans you kind of get used to, in my opinion. I got used to them pretty quick. Um, you, but weird thing is, I didn't think I had any 24 volt fans. I thought I only had 12 volts. So what I'd have to do is put some resistors on there, but I do not. So now I don't. Here is a 12 volt fan. This is not very quick. That's the only thing I have an issue with, is that it's not very, like, with the old analog stuff, it moves instantly when you move it. But this works for now, so what I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna complain. Um, so that's it for now. If I have any extra things, or when I assemble, I'm gonna make a video of me assembling the rest of this. I'll put that up, but for right now, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.